Hey guys, welcome to Bluff Check. GM should always roll behind a screen or by some other secret method. This is for two primary reasons. One, some rolls are better off secret, for example, perception or sense motive checks. This is because players shouldn't know if they succeeded or failed this check. This helps to prevent metagaming, subconscious or otherwise. The other reason is because sometimes for the sake of a game, a GM has to lie. Lying about the outcome of a role is called fudging, and if used well, it can be a great storytelling asset. But if used wrong, it can lead to problems. As a general rule, I don't fudge dice out of the favor of the party. I feel like if the dice gods are jamming with the party, then I'll let it go. But if, on the other hand, for some reason the dice gods have forsaken the party, I step in with my unlimited GM cosmic powers and give them a helping hand. I'm going to start with a really cut and dry example of when you should fudge dice. And I'm going to be using Dungeons and Dragons as my system that I'm using as an example, but most of the concepts here will apply to other tabletop systems. A low level party is walking through a path in the woods. You have a bandit encounter set up, but the entire party fails the perception check to notice the bandits waiting. So one of the bandits takes a shot in the surprise round. Not only does it hit, it crits, and then the crit is confirmed. And then you roll damage, it's max, and with a short bow that's three times damage, which is 18, and that's enough to incapacitate that party member. Pause. The reason why this is a bad situation is purely because a player has been temporarily removed from the game without making any real choices or having any agency over the situation. It was just some bad dice rolls. Perception, attack roll, crit confirmation, and damage. At any of these junctures, you could fudge the roll to prevent this from happening. First, you could fudge the perception roll. This is probably the worst one to fudge for a few reasons. One, getting caught off guard is an interesting event and can make combat more exciting. And secondly, the crit could still very well happen even if the party is aware. So that's not the best time to fudge the roll. You could fudge the roll on the attack roll. When it comes up 20, you can decide that critting this character would be a bad idea. So just fudge the roll down so that it hits but doesn't crit. That would prevent massive damage, and even though the player takes a hit, would keep them in the fight. Let's say you decided not to fudge it there, and you roll the critical confirmation. When it confirms, at this point you essentially get a second chance to say, okay, never mind, a crit's a bad idea. It's basically the same choice as before, but often fudging it at this juncture is more interesting than the previous one because of the tension created by the roll of the crit confirmation. Having a run-in that close with a crit is exciting, even if you technically lied about the crit not happening. Let's say you didn't decide to fudge it then, and you decided to go through with the crit. Well, you roll damage and it comes up a 6. That's 18, and you know it's too much. So you can fudge the damage down here. Uh, because of how crits work in D&D and most other systems, uh, crit can deal a small amount of damage. With a short bow, it's anywhere from 3 to 18. So if you just fudge the dice down, you can keep that player in the game, and everyone is happy. And just a little tip here, remember to make sure that the damage that you fudge it down to is something that that crit can actually deal. So if it's a normal longbow and you say it deals 11 damage, that's not divisible by 3, and at that point the party might suspect that something has happened there. This is a pretty clean example of when you really should adjust a roll to make the game more fun, but with great power comes great responsibility, and fudging dice should really only be reserved for those few really serious moments. If used too often, it can take away from the fun of the game. These games that use dice have dice in there for a reason, to create chaos and chance, and if you fudge too often it can take away from that and diminish the overall fun of the game. Dire situations can be really, really fun, uh, and fudging dice is just there as a last resort. For me, what it comes down to when saving a character by fudging is how much agency they had over a situation. If a character is truly being screwed over by the dice, then I'll throw them a helping hand. But if that player decides to have their character willingly run into a horde of orcs, well at that point they're on their own. Earlier I mentioned that you should make sure that when you fudge a roll, it should be a roll that can actually happen so that the players don't know. Well, you might be asking, why shouldn't the players know that you're fudging dice? I mean, you're making the game more fun, right? Well, you are. 
but it's better to keep the players in the dark about fudging because if they know that it's happening, then their successes feel less earned and less real and therefore aren't quite as gratifying. Thanks for watching. Do you fudge? Or should you fudge? Let me know in the comments. Click here to subscribe. So go out there and fudge responsibly. I'll see you next week.